Well, it sure is great to be here today. I'm excited to preach for you, and I'm excited to open God's Word. I, as I said in the first service, we have uh, the greatest preacher on planet Earth, so it's awful hard to follow him, but y'all pray for me. Yeah, I'll get through this. Uh, we'll talk about change today. We're going to be in, in the Gospel of John, uh, first chapter. Our pastor preached out of that last week. Um, we look into some different verses and different ideas. I'm not just going to uh, regurgitate what he did and do a little better than that, a little different than that. Certainly not better. But anyway, we're going to be in John 1, and we're also going to be in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse uh, 15 through 20. You might put a thumb over there or uh, mark that as well. I want to talk about change today. I want to talk about uh, the impact of change in our lives as we have been transformed by becoming new creatures in Christ. Uh, and to do that, first of all, I want to talk about the change, the transformation in Jesus that Paul, that uh, John talks about, and uh, then uh, look at our own transformation and try to uh, try to find out if we're if we're allowing that transformation to impact us the way that we that we ought to. Uh, I'd like to begin by reading these words. This is going to be from the New King James translation, if it differs a little bit from yours. Uh, John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might might believe he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, that light that, uh, that was the true light which gives life to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, but the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, or the will of, of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Let's pray together. Father, we ask Your blessings upon the truth of Your Word, the reading of Your Word. Lord, have Your Word touch our hearts. Let us realize once again how You've molded us and shaped us into the people we are in Christ, or the people that we may be if we've not yet made a commitment to be a child of God. Lord, let be not only aware, but be compelled to live true to your transformation in our lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Pastor told us last week that John is the... uh, the one who tells us the rest of the story, the other Gospels were synoptic Gospels. They saw things alike. And uh, John comes along and he says, now here is the rest of the story. And I'm going to begin by talking to you about transformation of Jesus. And I'm going to talk about some things that are going on in your life and in mine. And it's a blessing to be able to see that. Transformation is something we talk about. It's something that we've understood from time to time. I, I remember years ago when I was a youth minister in Houston, in uh, the mid-70s, and, and a young man named Ryan uh, had been visiting the youth group. He was a, a great young guy. He was, had, he was rough around the edges like I was. He'd come from a little bit of a troubled life, and he was getting involved. It had been involved in some things he shouldn't. And, and so we kind of hit it off, and uh, in time, he accepted Christ. And, and a few weeks after he was saved, he came to Sunday school one morning. It happened to be the first one to show up. I was there. And I said, Ryan, how... How's your spiritual life? And he said, well, you know, I'm still dealing with sin. I'm kind of surprised. I thought when I was saved, I wouldn't have to do that. And uh, I said, well, tell me about it. He said, well, you know, before I was saved, I was running to sin all the time. And, and now I find that I'm running away from it. And uh, he realized that he, he still had to deal with this, this sin problem that he had. He thought that God had taken care of it, forgiven him, and it was all gone away. But he did realize he was dealing with it differently than he did before. Rather than chasing after it, he was running away from it, as he put it. Uh, he realized he was different. He realized he'd been changed. And I think, I think we realize 
what the scripture says, and we realize in our own lives that we're not the same people that we used to be, that we've been transformed. And I, and I think there's, there's a, a lot of good there. I, we understand the moth, the butterfly thing, and, and, it, and it makes sense to us. And it's a beautiful illustration of, of transformation. I think of it, and, and I, I think of my life. Uh, as I stood in San Antonio, Texas, and outside the airport, and, and stood around there with about 40 other guys who were all civilians. We all had, we didn't all have long hair, but uh, some of us did, and uh, God, I can't imagine that. But uh, in, the, in the 60s, you, you, so that clears it up, and uh, we, were, we were there sitting around there, just old civilians, and I, I remember riding in the bus with a guy sat beside me, and he's from New York, and he talked all the way to, to uh, Barksdale Air Force, uh, not Barksdale, uh, wherever it is, uh, in San Antonio. And, but I never understood a word he said. You know, he, was, he talked too fast. And, and then all of a sudden at the end of basic training, we were military people. We stood straight. Our head was all our head shaved off. I understood him. He understood me. We, we were all different. We knew who to salute to and, and who to say yes, sir, to. And as I said in the morning service, they had any stripes, they had more than we did. So we just said yes, sir, to everybody. Uh, but we were different. We had been changed. Uh, I think about my three girls. I, I, I brought them up right. They were Hog fans. They, they were Razorback fans. Uh, and Halloween, they were little, little piglets, and, and their, their DNA was Razorback. They had a hog in their head. They were Razorback, and then they grew up, and I got two suitors and a cowboy. <laughs> now, that's transformation in reverse. That's, that's, not, that's not a good thing. Uh, Jason wouldn't agree, but it's not a good thing. Uh, impact of change. Nobody really likes change, but God is in the changing business. And in change, we have uh, responsibility. And the question today is, is our change impacting us the way it needs to? First of all, let's, let's look at the transformation of Jesus. That's where John starts. Uh, and he says some basic things. He says, first of all, we need to see Jesus as God. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Uh, we see Jesus representing, being, being represented by the term the Word. Uh, Jesus called himself the, the door. He called himself the light. He called himself the good shepherd. He called himself many different things to illustrate who he is and what he does in our lives. But here John says he's the Word. And the Word uh, illustrates a little deeper who Jesus was because you can't separate the person uh, of Jesus from him being the Word. Jesus spoke, let there be light, and there was light. Jesus said, take up your blanket and walk, and the man was healed. He said, you've been cleansed, and leprosy fell from people, and eyes were opened. He said, believe in me, and you'll be saved. And we identify with that completely. The Word is Jesus. He was with God, and he was and is God. So we see Jesus in the beginning as God. We see him as a creator in verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. He made it all. There's nothing that was made that he did not make. We see him as a creator. Then we see him as a savior. Picking up in four, he says, In him was the life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, but the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. In verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. And full of truth, we see that Jesus in the, in the fullness of time came and, and, and he gave himself. He lived a perfect life and he died in our place. He became the savior of the world. And we see a hint here of him being Lord as well. In verse 5, uh, he says, he shines, present tense. In verse 4, he was, past tense, life. Uh, but he shines in the present tense and the, the darkness did not, did not. Past tense to him. So he shines always. He is always the light. He is the light of the world in the beginning and now, and he always will be the light of the world. He is Lord. He is eternal Lord. We see the progression that John puts together that we might see the transformation of Jesus. Now, Jesus' transformation is the greatest transformation, and the impact of it, the greatest impact of any transformation of any person that ever lived. 
We divide time by, by uh, before Christ and after his death, a B.C. and A.D. We, we divide our lives by our life before Christ and our life with Christ. Everything that Jesus did brought change, and that change brought new life in Christ. I think to understand the change uh, easily is, is to, to look at the, the last five words in verse 14. He was full of grace and truth. Jesus came to a world that had preconceived ideas of who God was because all they knew was the law. All they knew was the, the, the commandments and the statutes and, and, and the judgment of God upon the, upon the people. And they knew of the history of God and his association with Israel. And yet Jesus came and, and, he, and he showed the love of God and he did so with grace. He showed the power of God as he, as he fulfilled the, the, the prophecies of who the Messiah would be and what he would do. And he did so with truth and grace. And he came as a final sacrifice and did so with truth and grace. Uh, the witness was that no longer is God just a God of judgment and a God of laws and statutes, but he's a law of love and, and compassion and care and grace and truth. What a blessing. And we see the transformation of Jesus and it unfolded to the people who God really is and how God wants to be involved with his people. And then... In these verses, we also see the beginning of, of some insight into our own transformation, the transformation of the believer. Uh, there's a central truth here I'd like for us to look at. It begins in verse 6. Uh, it says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear a witness of the light, that all through him might believe. Now, he was not the light, but he came to bear a witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. I want to come back to that in just a little bit. In verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to him, uh, to he gave the, the right to become children of God, even those who believe in his name and were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. Uh, John came as a witness to the light. God has always provided a witness. Uh, throughout history, he provided a witness. Through creation, he provided a witness. Through, through the old, the, 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 a judge, uh, he provided a witness. Through the prophet, through the king, and this, through the forerunner, John the Baptist, he provided a witness of the light of who he is. And in our lives, on this side of the cross, we're his witness. And that's who we're transformed to be. We're transformed to be the witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the, the church to be about? To make disciples. And we're the church. We're the people, be the people to be a witness for the Lord. We're transformed to make disciples, to be a witness for the Lord. Now, I said I was going to come back to this. Uh, he gives light to every man coming into the world. Uh, a lot been a lot of discussion about that. What does that mean? How do we reach every, every man that comes into the world? Paul uh, addressed that in Romans 1, uh, beginning in verse 18. He says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. It manifests in them. They know within themselves, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and his Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Paul says, listen. By the things that are made, people don't have an excuse. They ought to see what God has made and seek the, the, the creator of, of what they see. Uh, you may have heard this illustration time and time again about the watch illustration, but it really rings true to me. I, I'm, I've always been fascinated with the watches. I, I don't know. Uh, Timex, you can, get a, you can get a $10 watch at Walmart. I probably can't anymore. I'm, you know, grandparents always talk about when I was a kid. You know, walk 20 miles to school, both ways uphill. Uh, anyway, you can get a cheap watch, you can get an expensive watch. If you open up, they look the same. Uh, there may be jewels in one and, and you know, rhinestones in the other. I don't know. But, but uh, there's, there's springs and there's, there's round things that go round and round in one another, little notches, and they go click, click. And, 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 but it's amazing how, how they keep time so well. I mean... Just imagine every second that thing's ticking, and at the end of the day, it's pretty, pretty much right. But you can take one of those things and open it up, get your cigar box, and dump it all down in there, and take the back and the front, dump it in there, put the band in there, 
You can tape it up. You can shake that cigar box from now on. And when you open it up, there'll never be a watch. There never will be. No matter what, no matter how long you shake it, it'll never come together as a watch. When you look at a watch, you know there's got to be a watchmaker. When you look at creation, Paul says, there's got to be a creator. Has to be. Has to be. Uh, people are without excuse. They need to seek the Lord. And Jesus said, if you seek me, you'll find. So God is in control of all that. I don't know about deepest, darkest Africa, deepest, darkest United States, deepest, darkest Joplin. I don't know. But I do know that God knows. And uh, people that seek will find. Uh, for us to really take a better look at who we are as uh, witnesses of Christ, I think we can come over to 2 Corinthians 5. I hope you put your thumb there. It'd be up here. Uh, but I'll pick up in verse 15 there. He says, He died for all that all who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we know no man according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who reconciled himself through us, uh, through Jesus Christ, and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. And so God, we're pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I want to show you quick. Three quick things here that I think kind of open the door of understanding to what it means to be a witness of the Lord. First of all, we have a new goal in Christ. When we've been regenerated in Christ, when we've been transformed in Christ, He's given us a brand new goal. In verse 15, He says, And He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but should live for the Lord. This is not something that we, we, we realize is the fact that now when we live for the Lord and we go on about our lives. It's something we commit to every day that we get up. Every day we get up in the, in the morning, we should commit ourselves, Lord, let me live for you today. Let me, let me set my desires aside. Let me seek your will in my life. Step by step, bless me today. Let me represent you uh, as I live for you. Uh, let that be my goal. It's a goal that we have or should have uh, every day. We also have a new life, and we find that in 16 to 17. Therefore, from now on, we know, man, we know no man according to the flesh. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, we know him thus no longer. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, Paul is talking to some people that, that walked with Jesus. He's talking to disciples sometimes, he, he, uh, apostles. He's talking to, to part of the multitude that saw Jesus, people that may have just been, but maybe been healed by him or maybe just walked by him in the day and, and Jesus looked at them and, and, and maybe said something to them and, and rather than them to live their lives in, in, the, in the greatness of that moment I remember when Jesus looked at me I remember walking along the road one day and he stopped and he, and he spoke with me rather than living in the glory of that moment he said no we, 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 don't, we know no man according to the flesh even the Lord because there's a greater relationship than that now we're his witness now now we've been given a new life, and if any man is in Christ, he's brand new. He's a new creature. He's been recreated. He's been born the second time. And now all the things that were important are, are set aside. The old things are gone. Uh, the things that I valued, the things that I wanted, the things I chased after are not the things that are important to me now because all things have become new. All things have become new. We have a brand new life in Christ. Jesus left and he told his disciples, he said, no, stay in the upper room. Don't go out and mess this up. He said, wait on the comforter who will come. And on the day of Pentecost, everything changed. The Holy Spirit came, and Peter preached 3,000 people saved, and, and they had all things in common and were together, and what a blessing. Uh, the church was born, and everything changed. They had a brand-new life in Christ. They also had a brand-new purpose, and we find it at 18 through 20 there, it says, And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, 
Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. What a beautiful picture of the new purpose that we have. We have the, a ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. We have the ministry of evangelism and the word of evangelism. We have the ministry of being a witness and, and the word. This is the word, and we're all ministers of that word. Every one of us are ministers. We, we tend to look at, at Brother Jamie and, and our staff and, and, and deacons and Sunday school leaders, and, and we say, uh, these people are, 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 are people that minister to us. But we're all ministers of the Word. We're all ministers of the Lord. Uh, it's good that we realize that. We're all saints. We're all people that God has blessed and, and equipped and, and we have responsibility to, to take our witness responsibility and, and to work with that and, and to grow with a brand new purpose. We're his ambassadors. An ambassador is someone from another country that, that represents that other country in, in a different setting and to a different people, a different culture. And that's who we are. We've been so transformed, so different. Our, our citizenship is in heaven. We sang about that this morning. Our citizenship is in heaven, and, and now we represent the Lord, the, the ruler of heaven, the God of all the universe, to people on planet earth. What a blessing. What a responsibility. What a purpose that we have in Christ. And this is a normal purpose for every believer, for you and for me. And we can do it because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. One last real quick thing. John writes about the transformation of Jesus, and, and, it, and it's, it's easy to look at it like in, in the very beginning, before there was anything, uh, Jesus was the Word, and, and then time elapsed. No, we don't understand time in that, in that sense, but in the fullness of time, He spoke, and things were created, and then hundreds of years passed, and, and then He came uh, angels came and, and announced his birth and he was born of a virgin in Bethlehem and then 30 years passed and then, and then he, he took on his, his earthly ministry and, and for three years he, he fulfilled all the scriptures and then he died in our place for us. He took upon himself sin and he rose over that victorious and he ascended to be with the Father and, and we see that, that he did all of these things and it looked like a progression but yet the reality is he's always been the word He's always been the Savior, even before he came to earth. He's always been creator before he created him. Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever because he's the second person. He's God, the second person in the triune God. What a blessing to know that because he lives in us. He's our hope of glory. And as he is triune God, as he is all that we need, he is all we'll ever need as we are witnesses of the Lord. You truly can overcome. I truly can overcome. That person that you want to talk to about, about Lord, you want to witness to about what God has done in your life, that you've had some trouble because of whatever reason, you can do that as you trust God. You know, we are his ambassadors. It's a wonderful responsibility we have. And maybe today God has spoken to your heart about that and said, you know, I need to speak up. I need to be more vocal. I need to live my life in such a fashion that people see Christ in me. And maybe you'd like to come and commit to, to see that you follow through with that. Maybe this has all been a little bit unusual for you today and you've not yet understood what salvation is about, but uh, we're going to have Ryan and, and Adam come and stand up front. You come and, and let them share with you and, and pray with you today. Maybe you've accepted Christ and not responded in baptism and you have another need that maybe uh, God has placed on your heart and maybe you just want to come and pray at the front if you feel free to do that we're going to have our time of invitation hey thanks so much for listening to our podcast at First Baptist Joplin if you are interested in coming and worshiping with us live we would love for you to come at 9 and 10 30 on Sunday mornings